Living Seed Media brings to you God's Word, which is His comprehensive equipment for changing lives. May the Lord impact your heart as you encounter His Word. For further inquiry or counsel, contact Peace House, PO Box 971, Boko, Benue State, Nigeria. Telephone numbers 0703 036359, 0703 768119. Email address lsmedia at org, or visit our website at www.livingseed.org. Let us sit back and listen as the servant of God brings forth the word of life. This morning we are going to continue in the spirit of prayers. We are going to lift up our voices this morning for the harvest of souls in the nations. As we have heard, we have seen God commissioning us to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. That's Mark chapter 16 verse 15. And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. We have a commission, we have an obligation. And even from this scripture, you will discover that the scope of our commission is not, is not little. It is the entire world. All the nations of the earth are to experience the harvest of souls. He says, go into all the world. I want us to put this at the back of our minds as we look unto God for how we will cry to Him for the harvest that Jesus paid for in the nations. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all nations. And when he talks about all the world, he is speaking not only of geographical world. First of all, he is speaking about the geographical world. All the nations of the earth must be reached with the gospel. The Arab world, Asia, Africa, the whole of Africa, the whole of America, North and South, Australia is waiting. Every nation of the earth is waiting for this commission to be fulfilled by the followers of the Lord. All the world, even the geographical world. And you will agree with me today that the enemy seems to have carved out some portions as a no-go area. But they are definitely included in our commission. Are they included? They are included in our commission. All the world. Even the geographical world. But much more than that, he is also speaking to us to go into all the world in terms of professional world. The world of teachers. The world of doctors. The world into all the world of the professions. He is speaking about 
the world in terms of gender. We have the world of women, isn't it? We used to talk about the women's world, isn't it? That's part of the world that God is saying, Go into the world of women. Go into the world of men. Go into the world of the youth. Go into the world of students. Go into the world. He is talking about even the world in terms of age. Young people, old people. He is talking about the world in all dimensions. So when he says go into all the world, we must enlarge our hearts. He's not only speaking about geographical world. He's speaking in terms of profession, gender, age, even traditions, race. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. When he spoke to the children of Israel about the land that he was going to give them, you remember that he divided these lands to all the tribes of Israel. Am I right? He gave each tribe a portion of the inheritance. Just as he has already he has marked some portion of the world to you as his disciples. You have a portion in the world that he wants us to possess for him. You have a portion of the world to harvest for the kingdom. You have a portion. I have a portion. Unfortunately, if you go into the scriptures, you will discover that even though each of the tribes of Israel has a portion, not all of them actually occupied and possessed their portion. If you look into Joshua chapter 15, chapter 16, chapter 17, these are stories of war. Let me quickly just peruse it for you to see what happened. Which I'm praying that today we will cry to God that that will not be our portion. We will possess our possession. There shall be a rich harvest of souls in all the world in the name of Jesus Christ. In Joshua chapter 15, the last, I think the last verse, Joshua 15, verse 63, look at the tribe of Judah. As for the Jebusites, the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the children of Judah, could not drive them out. But the Jebusites dwell with the children of Judah at Jerusalem to this day. Is that true even today? Is it true today? Yes, up till today. Because the children of Judah whom God gave Jerusalem to in the first instance did not go in to possess that possession up until today the Jebusites still dwelt in the land until today it is still a struggle for the children of Israel to conquer that land for the Lord up till today and you are going to pray today and cry to God that your portion will not grow weak it will not become a problem for the upcoming generation in the name of Jesus you have a portion if you go to chapter 16 you will see another story of war verse verse um, 9 and 10 
Joshua 16, 9 and 10. The separate cities for the children of Ephraim were among the inheritance of the children of Manasseh. All the cities with their villages. And they did not drive out the Canaanites who dwelt in Gaza. But the Canaanites dwelt among the Ephraimites to this day. And have become forced laborers. Can you imagine? That the devil will pitch his tent in your own portion. And you will not be able to drive out the devil. You will not be able to conquer the land for, for Jesus. And then up to this day, those lands have become a thorn in the flesh of the children of Israel. You will call on the Lord that your portion will not go weeds and become a problem to the upcoming generation. Jesus has risen. He has paid the price. He has been given authority. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to him and he has given it to us. To go and preach the gospel in all nations. Your portion must not become a problem for the upcoming generation in the name of Jesus Christ. Chapter 17 verse um, verse 12 and verse 13 yet the children of Manasseh could not drive out the inhabitants of those cities but the Canaanites were determined to dwell in that land and it happened when the children of Israel grew strong that they put the Canaanites to forced labor but did not utterly drive them out was it forced labor that God said they should put those people? What did God say? Utterly drive them out, destroy them. Why we are not talking about destroying people? Our own is a spiritual warfare, isn't it? God is speaking to us to win them to Christ, conquer them, subdue them for Jesus. But when these children of Manasseh could not do their own portion, up until today is a problem it's a problem for the entire world because those unto whom it was committed could not do their job the whole world is our parish we have a commission to fulfill and in first Timothy chapter 4 verse 4 we are told that God desires that all men should be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. All men. How many men? All. Young and old. Male and female. All men. <coughs> be saved. And come to the knowledge of the truth. There is no human being that God has earmarked for destruction. He desires that all be saved. Because Jesus has paid the price over their lives. There is no human being on earth that Jesus has not died for. Why should they perish? That's why we are going to call on the Lord. So that the labor, the travail of the soul of Jesus will not be wasted in the nations as a result of our own complacency. The other day we were told that there are these two obligations, these two imperatives for us to preach the gospel. Jesus has fulfilled his own. But if we don't fulfill our own, the harvest will be wasted. Christ, Christ's labor will be wasted. And people will perish. The whole world is our parish. And we have a right to demand obedience unto Christ in all nations. We have a right because Jesus has paid the price. And we have a right to make that demand. The devil understands it. When we rise up to make that demand, Satan will give way. 
Because he knows that Jesus has paid the price. We must cry to heaven today for a harvest in the nations where you come from. And even nations that are not represented here today, we will lift up our voices to heaven for a rich harvest. We will call on the Lord to give us those nations. Now, even though Jesus has paid the price and God has commissioned us to go and preach the gospel in all the world to every creature. Even though that has happened, let's hear what the inhabitants of the nations are saying about our move into the nations. Luke chapter 19. Quickly, Luke 19, verses 12 to 14. Luke 19, 12 to 14. <coughs> Therefore he said, A certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. So he called ten of his servants, delivered to them ten minas, and said to them, Do business till I come. But his citizens hated him and sent a delegation after him, saying, We will not have this man to reign over us. We will not have this man to reign over us. Can you imagine that this nobleman has already gone up to receive the kingdom. And God has given him the keys of hell and death. And he has been given all authority in heaven and on earth. And we see Jesus that all things have been put under his feet. But the citizens, the inhabitants of this world have connived together and they said, We will not have this Jesus to rule over us. So, what are you discovering? First, it's too late. Because Jesus has commissioned us. Are you understanding? The decision of the nations of the earth not to have Jesus to reign over them is too late. It's too late. It's too late, unfortunately. We have an obligation and we have the authority. It's too late for them. But that is the decision. And that means there is a warfare that we must fight over all nations. There is a warfare over Nigeria. When you see the enemy rising here and there all over the nation of Nigeria, it is because they are saying we will not have this Jesus to reign over us. But it's too late. It's too late. It's too late for the devil. It's too late. We have the authority. We have the mandate. When you see what is happening, in Pakistan, you know that that's also what they are saying. We will not have this man to reign over us. But what, what would you like to say to the devil? It's too late. Can you say it to him today? Too late! It's too late. We have been commissioned. We have been authorized. We will arise from here to fulfill the mandate in the name of Jesus Christ. It's too late. It's too late. The same kind of thing they began to say right from the book of Psalms, you know. Let's read Psalm 2 very quickly. Psalm chapter 2. Psalms chapter 2. Verse 1 to 12. We'll read the entire chapter. Why do the nations rage? And the people plot a vain thing. The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord 
and the gates is anointed. Saying, let us break their bonds in pieces and cast away their cords from us. He who sits in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall hold them in their respect. Then he shall speak to them in his wrath and distress them in his deep displeasure. Yet, hey, the Lord says, Yet, I have set my king on my holy hill, Zion. I will declare the decree the Lord has said to me, You are my son. Today, I have begotten you. Ask of me, and I will give you the nations for your inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron. You shall dash them to pieces like a potter's vessel. Now therefore, be wise, O kings. Be instructed, you judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the son, lest he be hungry and you perish in the way. When his wrath is kindled but a little, blessed are all those who put their trust in him. The nations of the earth are raging. All the troubles you are seeing in the world today is against no one but the Lord. They have risen against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, We will not have this man to reign over us. We will break their bonds from us. We will not have this man to reign over us. <laughs> but God who sits in heaven, what is he doing now? He's laughing. <laughs> He's laughing at them. All the troubles, all the bomb explosions, all the struggles, we will not have this Jesus to reign over us. Jesus, the Lord in heaven, is laughing at them. He knows what he will do. He knows what he will do. He said to them, Yet, despite all your struggles against the Lord and against his anointed, I have set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. It's too late. I have already anointed my king. Jesus, the Lord of lords, the king of kings, he shall reign over all the earth. And we are his instruments. And he says to us, ask of me. You do all you need to do. There is no struggle. Because he knows what to do. He said, I will vex them in my sore displeasure. It's not your business to vex them. Are you understanding? This battle is the Lord's. He said, I will vex them in my sore displeasure. I will speak to them in my wrath. All you need to do is to ask. He says, ask of me and I will give you the nations and the uttermost parts of the earth for your possession. What are we going to do this morning? Ask the Lord. Ask the Lord. He said, I will give you. So we're going to rise up and be praying, asking the Lord for a possession today. You will ask the Lord for your geographical nation. You will ask the Lord for Nigeria. Give us Nigeria, oh God. Hand Nigeria over to us, your church. We are representatives of the church, the body of Christ in Nigeria. Lord, deliver this nation into our hands. Do you remember? When the Lord has carved out a portion for the children of Esau, He will not even allow the children of Israel to go there. He said, this one I have given into the hands of the children of Esau. So God gives nations into the hands of people. Are you getting me this morning? So you will ask, give Nigeria into our hands. And once he does that, let the devil knock his own head upside down. 
he won't give him Nigeria. Let the enemy rage, they will not have Nigeria. There is nothing the devil can do about it. Ask of me, I will give you the nation. You will ask the Lord for, for Liberia. Ask the Lord for South Africa. Ask the Lord as, as representatives of the church in Canada. God, give Canada over to your church. Give the United States of America into our hands. You will ask the Lord for Pakistan, for South Sudan. Lord, give South Sudan into our hands. Give us United Kingdom. So you will ask the Lord for your geographical nation. You will also ask the Lord for the particular nation, world that he has given to you. The world of doctors, give it to us. The world of traditional rulers, give these traditional rulers to us. And you will see them, they will be falling into your net. They will be entering your net. They will be entering, they won't know what is directing them to your net. Traditional rulers, call on the Lord. Give us the traditional rulers. Hand them over to us, O oh Lord. We will reach them with the gospel. You will ask the Lord for your profession. You will ask the Lord for your age groups. Give us the youth. Give us the women. Give me the women. Give me the men. Give me, O oh Lord, the aged, the world of widows. Give them to my hands. Give me, O oh God, this aspect of the world. And he says, I will give you the nations. And the, the nations I will give unto you and the uttermost parts of the earth for your possession. And we have the right to make these claims. We have been praying, we have been hearing God saying, uh, I will send you. We have had God teaching us the content of the gospel. He is equipping us with arrows. The arrows of the deliverance of the Lord, which is the gospel. He has, he has equipped us, He has opened our ears and our hearts to understand the content of the gospel. He has, he has shown us where to go now. He is saying, ask of me. Ask of me. Many of us came out, we surrendered our hearts, we want to go. Last night, multitudes, we trooped out. Many, even while in the congregation, we are saying, Lord, I'm ready. Send me. I commit my life to you and to the cause of the gospel. Yes, God wants to send you. He will send us. But now He's asking, first, before I send you to an inheritance, ask an inheritance from me. Ask me for an inheritance. Don't be complacent. Don't just say general. You are a general Christian with no inheritance. Ask of me. Do you remember Caleb? Caleb said, Lord, give me this mountain. Did the Lord give him? Did God give him? Answer me, please. God gave him the mountain that he asked. The daughters of Zelophehad, do you remember them as well? Their father had no son. And it's like the inheritance of their fathers will be lost. Because in Israel, inheritance was not given to girls. And these girls arose and said, what? Is it because our father has no son that his inheritance will be lost in Israel? Give us the inheritance of our fathers. You are going to call on the Lord, even as young ladies, as women, and as men. Give us the inheritance of our fathers. These people ask the Lord for an inheritance. Ask her, the daughter of Caleb, also was born to demand of the Lord for an inheritance. Why will you just stay as a general Christian? Ask the Lord, give me this mountain. Mention that mountain. Mention that aspect of the world to the Lord. And God says, I will give you. I will give you. And lastly, before we pray, to challenge our hearts to pray, we have the authority. And 
We are not making a wrong demand this morning for the nations. It's not a wrong demand. We have a right because Jesus has paid the price. And the illustration that quickly comes to my mind is the story of Samson. Do you remember Samson? In the book of Judges, chapter 15. Judges, chapter 15. We'll just go through it quickly and then we'll go to pray. So as to enable us to, to pray with all the passion that is in our heart. Because the devil wants to steal our inheritance. Judges, we'll read from chapter 14, verse 19. Then we we'll go over to 15, verses 1 to 6. Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon him mightily. And he went down to Ashkelon and killed 30 of their men, took their apparel, and gave the changes of clothing to those who had explained the riddles to uh, the riddle. So his anger was aroused, and he went back up to his father's house, and Samson's wife was given to his companion, who had been his best man. Hey, they were touching fire. Chapter 15, verse 1. After a while, in the time of wheat, wheat harvest, it happened that Samson visited his wife with a young goat. And he said, let me go into my wife, into her room. But her father would not permit him to go in. Her father said, I really thought that you thoroughly hated her. Therefore, I gave her to your companion. Is not her younger sister better than she? Please take her instead. And Samson said to them, This time! Everybody say, This time! This time! I shall be blameless regarding the Philistines if I harm them. Then Samson went and caught 300 foxes and he took torches. Turn the foxes tail to tail and put a torch between each pair of tails. When he has set the torches on fire, he let the foxes go into the standing grain of the Philistines and burned up both the shocks and the standing grain as well as the vineyards and olive groves. Then the Philistines said, Who has done this? And they answered, Samson the son-in-law of the Timnite, because he has taken his wife and given her to his companion. So the Philistines came up and burned her and her father with fire. Something is going to happen after now. Jesus has paid the price. Do you know, in this story, something has paid the bride price over this lady. In fact, the bright price he paid involved sticking out his neck and risking his life to go and, and kill the Philistines in order to get raiment to pay the bright price. He paid the bright price for this woman. But do you know what happened? The father of the woman gave her to the best man. What kind of marriage deal is this? Just because something went back home. And you know that Jesus paid the bride price and he has gone back to heaven. They thought he will not come back for his bride. They are joking. They are joking. He has paid the price. He has the right over his wife. But you see, the Bible says the whole world lies under the power of the evil one. They are the father. The devil is the father of every unbeliever. And he wants to give this bride over to another. God forbid. God forbid. Jesus has paid the price. So when, when Samson came back for his wife, you know what the father was saying? He said, I thought you don't love her. That's why you went away. So I've given her over to another. It's a joke. 
It's a joke. God, who owns the whole world? Because the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. He has already handed over the entire universe to Jesus. The devil can do nothing because he has paid the price. So when they did that, what did Samson now do? He caught 300 foxes. And I pray and I hope that you have been caught by Jesus. I hope you are one of the foxes that he has caught even in this meeting. He has a plan. He has an agenda with our lives. He caught these 300 foxes. And with them, he will discipline the nations. He will discipline the Philistines. He caught these foxes. And I see how the foxes surrendered to Samson while he was doing the deed. He was tying them tail to tail. And as he tied them tail to tail, he put fire on their tails and sent them into the cornfield, into the harvest of the Philistines. And what happened to the, to the foxes? They ran into the standing corn and the olive yards of the Philistines and burnt it down. He said, Samson said, now I will be blameless if I destroy these Philistines. I will be blameless. Why will he be blameless, please? He paid the price. We have the right to go into all nations and make a demand that the nations surrender to Christ. We have the right because Jesus paid the price. So in the first place, we are going to pray. We are going to first call on the Lord. You as a person, you have a portion in this harvest because Jesus paid the price. You are going to call on the Lord. Don't allow my portion to grow with you, Lord. Help me to possess my possession. Don't let me leave any portion of this inheritance to the next generation of conquered. It will become a problem for the generations to come. Lord, don't let me be part of those who will leave an inheritance on conquered lands for the next generation. And instead of this generation calling me blessed, they will call me accursed. Israel is suffering today. Oh, they are suffering. They have been fighting since that nation was born. They have been fighting because those who were to fight the first battle, they refused to conquer. You are going to pray, Lord, help me to conquer my world for you. Help me to conquer my nation. Contribute my quarter to conquer my nation. For Jesus, for a rich harvest of souls, help me. And then we will, we will receive an inheritance from the Lord. You must not go from here without an inheritance. You must not go uncommitted to an inheritance. A portion of the nations, geographical nations, professional nations, is waiting for you. You are going to ask the Lord, give me this mountain. You will talk about your nation to the Lord and say, Give me Pakistan. Give me United Kingdom, O oh Lord. Give me Europe, O oh Lord. Give me Nigeria. Give me Togo. Give me Benin Republic. Commit these nations to my hands. Give me the women folk in my nation. Give me the men. O oh Lord. Give me the youth. You will call on the Lord and receive an inheritance. As it happened to Caleb, as it happened to Aksa, as it happened to the daughters of Zelophehad. How many of us will receive an inheritance today? You must receive. You will receive. God does not commission people into emptiness. He will only commission you into an inheritance you have received. You will call on the Lord. Give me this mountain. And the Lord who is here in our midst 
who is waiting and he says ask of me you only need to ask of me I will give you you will pray today and call on the Lord Lord give me this mountain shall we rise up to pray there is a harvest waiting there is a harvest waiting a rich harvest the Lord of the harvest is here he is ready to send us but he will not send us into emptiness first just know that you have a portion will you please pray first for your life and say Lord I will not be one of those who will live on conquered lands for the next generation that in 20-30 years time the next generation will call me a cause ah God forbid pray speak to God help me whatever portion is my lot help me oh Lord help me to conquer help me to possess it don't let me live on conquered lands for the next generation invest prayers over your life invest prayers invest prayers there is a, a warfare over that portion of your inheritance call on the Lord to help you some of you have had the Lord before committing a portion into your hands but look at your struggles you have struggled for 10 years 20 years the wheels are as tall as ever call on the Lord help me help me my years are going and there are yet many lands to be possessed help me your years are rolling my brother my sister help me
Jesus' name we pray. Thus says the Lord, Ask of me, and I will give you the nations and the uttermost parts of the earth for your possession. Would you like to ask the Lord now for your nation and for nations? Some of you, it is not even your, your, your nation that God is giving you. It's another nation. And he says, ask of me. For you, it may be your geographical nation. It may be your professional nation. Your gender nation. Age nation. Whatever nation. First of all, ask of the Lord your geographical nation. God has already handed this over to Jesus because he has paid the price. You have a right to make this demand today. Ask of me and I will give you the nations. Would you like to lift up your voice and ask the Lord definitely? Let's pray. Lord, give me this mountain. Lord, give me Nigeria. Hand over Nigeria to your church. Hand over Benin Republic to your church. And I am included. First, ask for your geographical nation. Pray. That's all you need to do, first of all. Before you begin to carry the gospel to the nations, ask of the Lord, He will give you. Lord, 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 give us Nigeria. And Nigeria over to the church. Lord, give us Nigeria. Don't let Nigeria go with. Lord, Lord, give us Nigeria. And over the Jewish Republic. To our hands. God is waiting. Make sure you are praying. He who has it, receive it. Don't take this prayer session for granted, my brother. We are determining the destiny of the nations this morning. If your nation will fall in the hands of the church, it depends on what you do this morning. Lord, give Nigeria into our hands. Hand it over to us. We will win it in the kingdom of God. Hand it over to us. Oh Lord, I plead with you. Let the church overcome in Nigeria. Let the gospel prevail over Nigeria. Give us Nigeria. For the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein, they belong to you. Give us Nigeria, O oh God. Give us the nations. Lord, you have committed the gospel of reconciliation into our hands. Give us the nations to be reconciled unto you. the nations that are not represented here today 
ask the Lord for those nations. As many as you can remember. The Arab world is waiting to be harvested into the kingdom of God. As representatives of the church of Jesus upon the face of the earth. Ask the Lord for the Arab nations. we should ask and you are faithful you are not a man that you should lie neither are you the son of man that you should repent we dare to ask you today give us the Arab world hand them over to your church let them fall into our net Lord North Africa give us Central Africa give us West Africa oh God East Africa is waiting to be arrested Southern Africa oh give us Africa South America is waiting North America is waiting on oh Central America, the Caribbean. Lord, give us this nation. We plead with you. Don't let them fall into the hands of the wicked one. Give us Asia. Oh Lord, we dare to ask you. Asia seems unreached. Give us Asia. Give us India. Give us Pakistan, O oh Lord. Give us the Far East. Japan. China. Korea. Australia. Indonesia. O oh Lord. Give us the nations of the world. on us. Why should the death of Christ be in vain? He paid the price. Lord, give us this nation. today mention all the Arab nations that you know all the nations of the Middle East they seem to be the enclave of Islam but no 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 the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof you will soon see Islam collapse like a pack of rubbish Caught without hands, we soon strike the leg, the foot of clay of that giant. It will collapse like a pack of rubbish, says the Lord. Ah, Lord, give us the Arab world. Give us the Arab nations, Father. Jesus died for them. He paid the price. Father, we dare to ask you that from this meeting we will begin to see a harvest of souls in the Arab world. You know what to do. You told us you will bless them in your soul displeasure. You will speak to them in your wrath. You will cause that giant to collapse. Like a pack of rubbish. The battle is the Lord's. 
all you ask us to do. You said, ask of me. So we dare to ask you, give us the Arab world. Hand the Arab world to the hands of your church. Let it be so, oh God. Remember Pakistan. Remember India today. Oh Lord, give us these nations. All the nations of the Middle East. Give them to us, Lord, we pray. Give them to us. In Jesus' name, we pray. Will you please, for the sake of the fact that God has gathered you in Nigeria, pray for Nigeria. Look at the rage of Satan. It's because of nothing but the fact that Jesus has a reason to claim Nigeria his inheritance. Will you please pray, Lord, hand over Nigeria to your church. Don't let the enemy prevail over this nation where you have gathered us. The devil is not happy that you are here. You are gathered here. Pray, Lord, give Nigeria to us. Give us Nigeria. Let it become an epitome of your victory. A specimen of the victory of the cross. The victory of Jesus. Lord, give us Nigeria. Don't let the enemy succeed over Nigeria. Don't the enemy rages and the kings of the earth connect together. Saying, we will not have this Lord, Jesus Christ, to reign over us. Lord, we plead with you. Vex them in your soul displeasure. Don't let the enemy prevail. Don't let the devil have his way. Give us Nigeria, O oh God, we ask of you. And let the evidence, let it come. We plead. Let there be a rich harvest of the inhabitants of Nigeria in the north, in the south, in the east, in the west, in the middle west. A rich harvest of souls into the kingdom of God. We ask you for this Lord. Give us Nigeria. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Will you please ask the Lord for your, your, your professional nation, your professional world, your gender world, your age world, whichever world God has committed to you, even by virtue of your profession, by virtue of your age, by virtue of your gender. Ask the Lord for these words. Ask the Lord. He says, ask of me. I will give you. Will you pray now? Let's pray. Why should the devil reign over your world? Why? When Jesus has paid the price, when will it be given over to another? Why? Why will the world system reign in your own nation? Why? Look at what is happening today in your profession, in the judiciary, in the health world. In the teaching profession, look at corruption. Look at all kinds of weaknesses, troubles in your profession. Why should the enemy rage? As the Lord, Lord, give me, give me this portion of inheritance. Give me this mountain, oh Lord. Help me to win it. 
in the kingdom of God. Help me that the gospel will prevail over my world. Make sure you are asking. Is what you ask today you will receive. 